Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Mortal Fury. I'm Dean. I'm Chris. Merry Christmas. That's right. This is Christmas morning. Christmas morning. It's Friday. Friday. Yep. Merry Christmas to everybody out there. Yep. Um, Chris and I was realizing that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this is Christmas morning. Yeah. And we were talking about our past and our upbringing and our traditions a right. little bit. Right. And we both had uh, memories uh, within our families that uh, someone in our family would always, would read uh, the story from Luke, mm -hmm. Luke two there. Yep. Um, and, and I remember that in our family, our, our tradition <laughs> they would always have us kids, all the cousins, we they would dress us up, and we're, we're doing some kind of scene now, and we're doing a nativity scene or, mm -hmm. or doing something to where the kids would get dressed up and then an aunt of mine or someone in the family would read uh, Luke, the great story right. of this child uh, being born. So it was funny, Chris and I talking about our, some of our past traditions and some of the similarities that we had in, in that. We know you believers out there, we know every day, we're so thankful that every day we can celebrate right. our Lord and Savior. And what right. he's accomplished for us all. And that um, you don't need a special day to remember that. It's it's every day. Mm -hmm. So we're very thankful for that, of course. Uh, but with that said, we know you all, especially here in our uh, traditions that we have within our families, you can't escape it. No. This holiday season, uh, it's everywhere. And hey, the good news is now that it, it starts even before Halloween. Hmm. They got their Halloween stuff up, and you got Christmas crap up at the same oh, yeah, time. It, it yeah, it's really right. <laughs> we can't, we can't start this season no. soon enough. No, uh, it seems like anymore. Uh, but he's he's right. Um, the traditions and the passing on. This is one of my mom's favorite um, celebrations. Is Christmas? She absolutely loves Christmas, and I would never want to say or do anything that you know would upset her uh, about that um but dean and i were talking about how these traditions are carried on and and we want to pass something on uh by keeping a lot of these things alive and you said you guys did a sort of a live nativity or or where we beth and i started we wouldn't open presents until we read luke 2 Mm -hmm. You know, we wanted the children to realize the importance of the significance of this birth. Now, having said that, I told Dean that I recently we were looking at old videos of our kids uh, on Christmas morning. And <laughs> I'm looking at it now with different eyes. I'm looking at it from a different perspective. And what I was telling him was, my kids... Physically, they could not contain themselves. They were so excited and stuff. And yet, we were going to force them to sit and listen to us read Luke 2. And I, look, I think of that, and I know we had good intentions. There was a good intention, but our kids didn't pick up anything. <laughs> At five, five six years mm -hmm. old, they weren't understanding. All they wanted to do was get into that cornucopia of presents mm -hmm. underneath the tree. Uh, but it's funny, we, we want to uh, relive those, and I don't want to make anybody feel bad about that. But like Dean just said, when you look at the story of the birth of Christ with the eyes the believers have today, the significance is quite a bit different than what my church upbringing was now. I look mm -hmm. at the significance of that birth, what it meant to the Israelite, you mm -hmm. know, the, all that prophetic uh, scripture that told of this coming birth. Um, I mean, let me read Yeah, that. Yeah, jump in there and read some of that. This is found in Luke 2. So jo Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to Bethlehem, the town of David because he belonged to the house of the line and line of David. He went there to register with Mary, 
who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born, and she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. <clears throat> she... Hmm. Yeah, we, I had no idea. Mm -hmm. but, but, and she, I don't think they, they had no idea. No. She wrapped him in clothes, placed him in a manger, because there was no, you know, room in the end. Uh, and there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks. And an angel of the Lord appeared to them, and glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. The angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today, in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. <clears throat> he is the Messiah, the Lord. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, people's going to read that today, yeah. this weekend, Tonight, perhaps, yeah. you know, the church services, they're going to read it. But I wonder how many know the significance of who Jesus is. Yeah. I'm, I'm who he is today. Right. Who he is today. Right. And we were talking about, uh, once again, we have God with those small numbers. Here's the birth of the Savior of the world. Right. And the people in attendance are the parents, the stable animals. <laughs> yeah, it's very small. I mean, who really knows what was happening? The wise men, whatever number of they wise do. men there are, and shepherds who came to see what the angels were talking about. That's the audience that that the baby Jesus has there. It's very similar so many times what we see how God works in small numbers. Yeah, and we, this we, is another evidence. Yeah, we of, think he's definitely working in small numbers still yet today. Mm -hmm. We're within the same time frame, the same eon. Right. And yeah, do we really know who Christ is, who the Savior is, who the Messiah is today? And when you look at our traditions, uh, that'll be pointed out. You know, what we're kind of pointing out, they'll, they'll encourage people within Christianity, for sure, it's the big Christian holiday. They're going to encourage everyone to, to look away from the circumstances of the, the holiday season, everything that mm -hmm. you're caught up in uh, with that, and to look to the true meaning, which, according to them, is um, Jesus being born the Savior. Mm-hmm. What Chris and I now believe, and believers out there believe, we know he is the Savior. Um, back when I was celebrating those traditions and enjoying those times, I didn't believe he was the Savior. And that, that's so mm -hmm. strange. I, I didn't really believe. I believed he was a potential Savior. Yeah. And that, and that he might, or he will save me if I allow him to, was my tradition. It was up to me mm -hmm. completely. So there's significance in this to us today because we no longer believe that. We just believe he is the Savior. Well, and we also see as the baby Jesus, we know he came to fulfill the Israelite expectation. He was called the king of the Jews. Right. And they knew that their expectation would be that a, a, a king would lead them into their kingdom where all the nations are blessed through Israel. And this was what, and yet what did they do? They killed him. Yeah, that's a great point. The religious community of that day mm -hmm. killed him. The pushback came Pharisees. from Pharisees and okay. Sadducees. Yeah. What are you doing? Why are your disciples not following our traditions? What's going on here? Exactly. Why are you yeah. going against everything? Well, they ended up killing him. He didn't fit. Right. And then to then, as believers, then to recognize... Christ's work in the Israelite gospel, the same Christ child and the work that is significant in the secret administration, the same Jesus. Mm -hmm. And now we have the, the secret administration. However, today's religious institutions hearken back to the Israelite Jesus. Mm -hmm. 
And unfortunately, we don't see attention being paid to the secret administration, the same Christ child, and what is being accomplished there. Um, we're so preoccupied with the traditions, uh, Israelite traditions. Right. And we see it in all of our churches, uh, the nativity scenes that you see on everybody's lawn, and you're left wondering which Jesus are we talking about. So, so who do we say this this babe in the manger is? Yeah, it's a good question. Like I said, we're going to celebrate. We're celebrating today all over our nation. He's the babe in the manger. Here in a few months, we'll have an Easter special, right? He's back mm -hmm. on the on the cross. Mm -hmm. And then months here, you know. Get him off the cross, put him back in the manger. Back in the manger. And he's back on the cross. And it's this continuation, this a lot of tradition. Mm -hmm. Celebrating Jesus Christ is what we're celebrating. But who are we really celebrating? Who is he? Who is he all those days between yeah, the manger and Christ. the cross? Right. Who is he? Who is the Christ? Uh, what did he come to do? Did he accomplish his goals? Right. Is he the Savior? Is he the Savior that God sent him to be? Um, is he the Savior that he wants to be for all people, like we read? Mm -hmm. Good news and peace for all people has right. come. The Messiah is here. He showed up. He came to do a job. Um, so it's a good question to ask. Believers, you know the answer. Uh, you, you know he's the Savior. And we're so thankful to celebrate that every day and to rely on the living God, um, to rely on his Son. So that's what we do. That's what we're trying to share, Paul's Evangel. Chris has been talking about the secret. Yeah. Like I said, the... It's an amazing secret that's hardly known and hardly believed, even today, what uh, Christ really came to do. It is the babe in the manger, is he sufficient? Mm -hmm. That's what I'm sitting here thinking. Yes. It, is that babe in the... Will he be sufficient in the work he was sent to do? Or does it take you? Does it take us to add to that? Yeah. We don't think it does. We think it's sufficient. Yep. In fact, we don't think there's anything you can add or take away from what he's done. Right. The human does not have that power. So let's let's share some things of what Paul says. Okay. About the Savior. Where are you at? Uh, Philippians. Okay. Good place. Wherefore also God highly exalts him and graces him with the name that is above every name, that in the name of Jesus every knee should be bowing, celestial and terrestrial and subterranean, and every tongue should be acclaiming that Jesus Christ is Lord for the glory of God the Father. It says everybody's mm -hmm. going to do that. Everybody. Right. Uh, and not in a way where their arm is bent behind their back. Yeah going to be praise right it's going to be recognition realization right um, that he's your savior yeah we we love colossians 1 20 especially in the message he was supreme in the beginning and leading the resurrection prayed he is supreme in the end from beginning to end he's there towering far above everything everyone so spacious is he, so roomy, that everything of God finds its proper place in him without crowding. Not only that, but all the broken and dislocated pieces of the universe, people and things, animals and atoms, get properly fixed and fit together in vibrant harmonies, all because of his death, his blood that poured down from the cross. Mm -hmm. and, and Clyde and his daily email goodies he put out uh, something about this holiday season and uh, I wanted to read this one specific paragraph 
Much attention is given in this season for the babe in the manger. But we must look to the Lord of glory, who is now at the right hand of the Father, and we are seated there with him. That's in Colossians 3, 1. As in, as in all other parts of the year, we should live our day-to-day -day lives unto him and him alone. Colossians 3, 17 and 23. Y'all have a great week and uh, a, a wonderful holiday season. And uh, we'll see you soon. Love you all. Love you. Bye.